Welcome back, everybody, to the Made Over Podcast. I am the lovely co-host, Mrs. Made Over. Um, my counterpart, my husband, mm, he ain't here, y'all. So guess what? It's just me today. Um, so uh, Mr. Made Over took a nice little sabbatical uh, from all things social media. So for the month of March, you will get to have me. <laughs> Um, so I'm so excited to uh, be able to come on the platform and share with you all just what has been uh, given to me, what has been downloading to me to be able to just give it back. Um, you guys know that this platform is one where we don't want to keep things to ourselves. We want to be able to share with you. Um, how things are going and as well as letting you know that life that you are living is not uh, you alone. We also deal with things. And so we just want you to know that you do have people in your corner that um, is actually rooting for you. So um, we want to definitely or I want to thank you personally for your continued uh, likes, shares, subscribes. Um, the notification bells. Thank you for clicking on that. Um, your support is completely appreciated. We couldn't do it without you um, sharing and liking and getting this far on this platform. So um, glory to God. We send many blessings to you all on just being here as a support. Um, but for the month of March, I got a little excited once I realized like it was Women's History Month. And then here it is, the woman of um, Made Over is here to present some topics to you guys. So Women's History Month, right? Whole month of March. Let's celebrate the women. So it follows Black History Month. And what I saw was the trend of a continuation of black history. And for me, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So here I am, I'm thinking like, all right, black history month, boom, done, right? So now we got women history month. Well, guess what? You got black women, you got Caucasian women, you got Filipino women, Latina women, Hispanic women, like, you have so many different cultures of women who have done things. And um, from what I have seen so far on social media is there is a lack of representation. We already had the Black History Month. So no, no, no downfall or pushback about supporting black women. Yeah, we should. But then what about the other women that are doing things? So what about our different cultures of women who have um evolved and who have taken strides for their culture for their environment we aren't even acknowledging them so that's kind of how i got to where i am today as far as my topic um so we're going to be talking about women's her story month so Yes, women history, like what strides are you making? But what about the stories that as women we have to tell or should be telling? Um, so a lot of times as women, we want to just bind together with those people that we are comfortable for. But never in a million years do we sit back and say, you know what, let me actually bind with somebody or connect with somebody who is equally yoked, who has the same mindset, who's on the same path that I am. Why can't we connect with those people as well? Why can't, why do we have to, why does it have to be the black women and then the Caucasian women. And so why can't it be a mixture? Like the goal is not to sit up here and boost one race. The goal is as women to sit here and boost each other. And that's where I was like, her, it's her story. Like it is our story as a woman to be able to share with other women of different races, to share with our daughters, to share with our granddaughters of how things came over with the different stories. And it may just not be a race. Th it's not a race thing. It's never been a race thing when it comes 
from history when I'm talking about the women history, because we've all bared children, we've all bared burdens. Some of us are um, mothers and daughters and grandmothers. And so we have all of these different roles, but we're women and we aren't sharing what we should be sharing with each other. We want to keep the goods for ourselves. And so that's where it became a problem for me when we focus too much on our race, our group, our clique. We're getting to that point where that type of mentality has to be broken. That cycle has to be broken. That uh, mindset, the fixed mindset of it has to all be broken because if not, we're going to continue to run this rat race over and over and over again. So then um, what can we do to promote each other? The one thing that I found is that in this COVID pandemic thing, the quarantine thing is my goal has been to connect with people that are like minded, women that are like minded. It is not about the race. It is not about um, the the wealth or the social economic status. I'm not worried about those things. I am worried about can this person provide things to me that will uplift me, that will build me up, that will encourage me, that will inspire me? And then am I able to do the same thing back to them? That's what it is or it means to have women history. In order for us to get to the history part, we have to be able to share our story because each of us come with her story. It is your story that you are having to share with others to help them to overcome. If I sit still and I only share with people that are in my clique, people that are in my group, my girls, my home girls, my boo, whatever you call your clique, if you only are focused on that, then you definitely are not like sharing the women history because you are not the only one that is going through the things that you're going through. There are other women out there. And if you never share your story with her, you're failing. You're failing that you're failing your own race. You're failing yourself. You're failing your, your children, your children, children. Like, where do we stop and, and look at what is going on around us? If I am quiet and if I never share my story with women or young girls that I come into contact with, her story will become my story, which will become somebody else's story. So why not share the overcoming so that they don't have to follow behind, you know, my story and then her story is better. That's what we should be doing. How can my story help to make somebody else's story better? It is not about, and I'm probably jumping ahead of myself, but it's not about what we look like, how many likes we can get, what new outfit, what shoes, what it's not about that. That's what we want to focus on, but it's not about that. So at the end of the day, when you are laying in your nightgown or your PJs or your jammies, whatever you call them, and you have taken off all of the other things, what is the story that you have that has been um, manifested within you? What is the story that has been created that molded you? The who are you? How can you translate that to somebody else? That is where the history will come from. So let's get away from the celebrating business people and, you know, entrepreneurs and these people and great. Not saying that you have to, uh, how do we put it, that you have to 
to not celebrate these accomplishments of people. But what about just your average everyday stay at home mom? Shouldn't her story be told too? She's not the only one that's a stay at home mom. So do we overlook her story because somebody else's story is a little bit better because somebody else decided that I'm going to go and I'm going to be an entrepreneur and my business is now successful. So do we all flock to her? And her story on how she made it. Do we not focus on the lady that is at the house? Or what about the mom that can't put something on the table? Do we just disregard her story? No. Like that's just crazy to me. So I think what we need to start doing is take off and take off our blinders and Stop looking at those things that don't really matter because her business, oh girl business, or my friend business can easily like fail. Then what's her story? Are you going to be boosting her up then or are you going to go and you're going to boost somebody else's business? This is where we have to learn as women to bind together to uplift It is not about a race. It is not about shining light on women only in your race, only in your culture. Let's look at what women in other cultures are doing and let's mesh together because the better her story is, the better our story as women, the the, the better it is, the better we become the unified version of a woman. And we don't want to look at that. So what's the, like, I I just don't understand. And that is the thing that sets other women apart because you have women who are wanting to connect. My favorite one, and this was me, y'all. So I'm just talking about me. I don't do girls. I, I can't hang with no women. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I like hanging with the dudes cause I just get along with them better. Okay, (laughs) granted, been there, done that. But at what age do we stop declaring that over our life? At what rate do we start shutting that down, shutting that fixed mindset down? We all say, well, when women get together, it's just a mess. They can't even do nothing because it's just just a cat fight. Okay. But when do we stop saying that about ourselves? When do we stop saying that as women, we cannot get along with other women? Did you try? Did you find something that was in common with that woman you were trying, quote unquote, to get along with? Did you step outside of your box And then try to speak with a woman in a different race. Because sometimes, you know, we might mesh with people of different cultures. And there's nothing wrong with that. But do we even try that? Or do we just shut it all down and just say, nope, I'm just one of the homies with the boys. You know, they, you know, I'm just, mm. you, mm, what? You mm, didn't try? (laughs) You didn't try to, to bond with somebody? Because your attitude, because the story you carried made burden on you. So you just didn't want to connect with the woman. (laughs) Y'all, it's just too much. At the age that we are now, us older women, us millennial women, We got to stop that foolishness. We are now too old to be saying, I can't get along with a girl. I can't, I don't, I can't have a lot of female friends. I just don't do females like that. Yes, I said it. Guilty, hand raised. Yes, been there, done that. Said it plenty of times. But I had to get out of that mindset. So what will it take for you to get out of that mindset of, I just don't like females. Mm. She just thinks she all that. 
she thinks she better than me. <laughs> Man, we too old, y'all. We are too old. It is time out for that particular mindset, for that decreeing over your life of what you can and can't do. It's time for us to stop. It's time for us to put a pin in it somewhere where we can't even reach no more because I found that to be the thing that kept me away from women. When I said I don't do females like that, it hurt relationships. It burnt bridges instead of me being able to connect. So now that I've gotten older, I've learned from my mistakes. I see my mistakes, you know, and I've forgiven myself for the foolishness and the stupid things that I said. And now it's like, okay, let me connect with this lady and that lady and that lady. So when I go to the store, I'm talking to, I meet friends, y'all. Y'all heard about my friends before on the podcast. So yes, I meet friends when I go to Target, when I go to the grocery store, when and I just talk because all we need to know as women is there are women in this world that may not look like us, that may not sound like us, that may not have come to the, from the same background. But guess what? We all share something in common. Our story. And if my story can be shared with her. And then her story can be shared with someone else. It just allows us to see that we are not in this thing alone. And don't let society, you know, well, it's all about this. Women's History Month. We got to focus on one set of women. No, everybody's not an entrepreneur. Everybody does not work nine to five. Everybody's not a stay at home mom. Everybody's not homeschooling their child. Everybody's not the breadwinner of their family. There's some single moms out there. There's some struggling moms and women out there. What do we do? We share her story. We don't just share ours. We look to edify and uplift and motivate each other. And if we don't do that, we are failing women history, period. Like it's just, there's just failure. So we need to start coming together and sharing with others and stop the foolishness of, I don't get along with women or females just ain't my thing. I'd rather hang with the dudes because what, it, what I'm finding out is this is that's being passed down to the younger generations, the gen, I think it's gen Zers. It's being passed down because I was sitting, um, most of you guys know I teach and, uh, it was car duty and the baby was, she was just so loud, <laughs> real loud. And I just was like, mm, I remember I used to be that loud. And she said, and, and a little, and one of the boys told her, girl, you just loud. She said, I know I'm loud cause I'm from the hood. Baby, that is not a mentality. So her story is I talk like this because I'm from this particular environment. That is the the damage that we are doing to our children where she feels like I talk loud because this is where I'm from. That might not be why that baby talk loud. I talk loud because I just talk loud sometimes. I'm just loud every now and then and sometimes I'm quiet but if we don't help shape our young kids minds they're gonna be lost and it's probably because no one share their story that baby needs to be taught how to use her loud voice to shut down and pull down some strongholds, to speak life into some women, to speak life into her peers, not to be talking reckless. And that all comes from how we are carrying ourselves as women. And if we never, ever put a stop to it, it's just a cycle that goes around and around 
and around. So what do we do? What, what do we do about women whose story need to be shared beyond just a month? Cause yeah, we, you know, we have our months and stuff and you know, our weeks and stuff, but women's history, just like, you know, we say, well, black history is, it's all year. It's 365. Okay. Women's history is 365. Women's history is every day. Women's history is 24 seven. We just aren't sharing our history with others. So it falls back on us having to do a self check, a self reflection so that we know exactly what it is we have to do to be able to help the next woman. So y'all know I had to like, I was sitting on this thing and I'm like, well, Lord, what do I do? And how, how is this tied back to you? Because, you know, I, we, you know, this platform is, it would not have been created without God. So that's who we keep God first. So when I thought about this and I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't know what I'm talking about. What, 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 what am I supposed to do? Cause I, I have nothing. I have no topics. And if y'all know, <laughs> you know, my husband talks about me sometimes cause I'm not ready. I, I just don't have topics like that in my head. Um, or I just don't think that they are, uh, well enough to will be received but this one it was like just sitting i'm like women's history and i'm like i'm seeing nothing but black women again then we just finished with black history month did, did we did we not have 28 days of that can we share some other women can we share some other women can we share their story does it always have to be the black history, the black herstory month? They didn't say black herstory month. Women's black is not. It's not women's black history month. It's women's history month. That include all women. Okay? All women. So, as I was looking at this thing and I'm like, mm, what scripture came to mind as I was, you know, sitting on this women like women's history, women's history, women's history. like that was literally how my mind was going. Was women's history, women's history, women's history. And I'm like, all right, well, what about women's history? So um I had to parallel it. For for some of y'all, you know, if if you don't read the Bible, um, that's okay. But um we read the Bible over here. And so as I was pulling this topic, the, the one that came to mind was the women of Titus. Um, and it was Titus two, three and three through five. And it says, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husband so that no one will malign the word of God. What? So this thing told me that with the Women's History Month, right? How I took this is the older women, right? You're at the top of the totem pole. So for my for my my drivers that are in the car, look at it like an umbrella, right? I got my umbrella. The top of that umbrella, the covering should be the older women. And then the older women should be covering the women under them. So we'll say like the middle aged women, right? The middle aged women should be covering the young women. So it's pouring down. So in order for the history of women to be able to be put out, to be able to be shared, it first has to come from the older women. If the older women choose to not share, then what knowledge will the younger women get? They won't get any. So it's, is knowledge about 
slandering people. So y'all know we like to gossip as women. Y'all know we talk about people. So don't, don't, why her hair look like that? That ain't, that, that wig is not, ooh, that lace front is not cute. Y'all know we do it. Y'all know we do it. So it's telling me though that the older women should be telling me how to not do these things, how to not be addicted to, to the, to the wine, right? to the wine i'm gonna look at my i'm gonna look at the same scripture because i think i had it in the message version as well so in the message version it says guide older women into lies of reverence so they end up neither as neither gossips nor drunks but models of goodness by looking at them the younger women will know to love their husbands and children be virtuous and pure keep a good house be good wives we don't want anyone looking down on god's message because of their behavior what so it's telling us as women we should not be gossiping older women you have to teach the younger women and then the ones of us that know better as younger women us millennials it's not all about the other foolishness because it says right here that we should not be gossiping nor be drunks okay guilty right hand is i can raise like all my hand, my hand, all my hands raise my hand and my feet because i've been there gossiping drunk right but in titus it's telling the older women look you gotta share the stories so that when you share the story then her story won't be like yours because then you're teaching her what not to do. You're teaching the next generation of young women or young girls what not to do. Baby, don't gossip because that's not going to do. Baby, don't get drunk because it's not worth. If we never tell them that and we just say, okay, they just going to drink then we'll just leave. They just sitting over there talking about people. I don't know why they doing that. Because ain't nobody told him. Look at her over there with that solo cup. I wonder what she drinking in it. She always got something in a cup. You gossiping and you letting her drink. So what model are you being for the younger girl, older women? Millennials. What model are you being when you got your cup. Like I said, guilty. But I thank the Lord, though, because I hadn't had a drink since 2012. Because I had to change my story. Because guess what? There's a little me and a mini me. And their story does not need to be like mama's story. And in order for that to happen... I had to change my story so her story and her story won't be what mine was. So when we take on that mindset of the fact that we need to change how our story is being uh, aligned, it will then help others. Because not only do I have daughters, but I'm a teacher. And so I have female students. So if they see me popping off at the mouth and I'm telling them, no, baby, don't do this. But then they see me. What good am I doing them? What am I showing them that it's OK to have a messed up story? That it's OK for your story to be jacked up? Uh-uh, boo. It's not. Sweetheart. Your story does not need to mirror somebody else's story if you can learn. I always believe this. You don't have to make the mistakes of others. You can actually learn from their mistakes. So if I, uh, okay, let's, I was a drinker, heavy. I was a drinker. I supplied, uh, you know, I was the person, I was the go-to person, 
when you wanted a drink because I would mix them up real good. Well, guess what? That got me. Nothing but being able to now look back like, ugh, I did meet some good people. I did make some connections, but it didn't get me anywhere and it didn't get that person anywhere. It got me like, oh, man, I can't drink no more because now I got to watch her because now her story is just like my story. So now as an adult, I can tell a college student, sweetheart, you don't have to go to a party to drink. Sweetheart, you don't have to be cool if you down in drinks. You don't have to take shots at a bar. These are things we should be sharing. If you have the experiences, share them. Because if you never share them, guess what? That person's going to make the same mistake you made. Why? Because nobody told them that they did not have to follow in those same footsteps. Your child goes off to college and follows your footsteps. You mad. You big mad. But then you can't get big mad at her because you never shared your story with her. So now her story is the same as yours. It's just a repeating cycle. The younger women will know how to love their husbands and their children, right? And I want to put this in here too. They can also learn how to love themselves by watching the older women, by watching the woman that is older. So think about it like this. I have my babies and my four-year-old, y'all. She is literally my shadow. And she will put my shoes on. She will put my jackets on. She wear my scarves. She put my, my, my units on and, you know, everything. She is following in my footsteps. So if mommy is making wrong moves, guess what her story is going to be? Making wrong moves. We're supposed to know how to do things by looking at the older women. And these older women may not be mothers. They may not be grandmothers. They may not even be anybody related to you. But if you have a woman you can look up to that is doing things the right way, then the righteous way on the right path, let me say that, then you have somebody to look up to. But you just got to stop bumping your head and look up to them. So we have to start sharing these things because if we don't, y'all, it is going to, ooh, mm, it's, yeah, it's going to be bad because society is already claiming the lies of our young women every single day. Social media, oh God, is taking over our mentality and the innocence of our young girls. And we're just sitting back like, eh, I'm just going to chill and watch. Why she's sitting there like, why her, mm, where her mama at? Because she sure need to cover, mm, she got all that, mm. Her mama let her come out the house like, mm. Her mama knows she dating, mm. All you're doing is talking. You're gossiping older women. And when I say older, it's whoever is older than you. I don't need to be sitting back gossiping about somebody younger than me. I need to be sharing. I need to be pouring. I need to be imparting into them. I need to be encouraging them. Baby, you don't have to show your skin. Been there, done that, gets you nothing but the negative attention. So when are we going to stop just letting our girls go by the wayside, letting our young women go by the wayside? Are we going to continue to sit and gossip and let them be drunks? Are we not going to be models of the goodness that it's telling us to do? If we do good, if I'm doing good things, my girls, my daughters will do good things. If I'm doing bad things, guess what their story will be? Well, mama did it and her story is going to be the same thing. 
when she has kids. Her mom, you know, grandma did it. My mama doing it so I could do it. No, you have to stop that generational cycle from going around and around and around. Somebody can step off. Will that somebody be you? That's what you have to ask yourself. This is all about self-checking. This is all about checking your intentions. This is all about your story as a woman. Don't let anybody define whether you are, uh, what's the word? Whether you are deemed or whether you're, uh, oh man, worthy of being celebrated for Women's History Month. Uh, yes, you are because you're a woman. Whether you're a wife, whether you're not. Whether you're a mom, whether you're not. Baby, you're a woman. You're a girl. History month. You still matter. History year. Okay? So there's no if ands, or buts. There's no questions asked about it. You are an important factor in this world. Without you, there's no reproduction. Okay? There has to be some nurturing. Me and my husband's a you know great nurturer, but there's only so much he can do. He can't do a whole lot. But this is where we have to start looking at ourselves. Are we virtuous women? We always talk about, or I always hear y'all, I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay, but are you virtuous? Um, you know, do you, you know, or I'm gonna be a Proverbs 31. I'm a private study one woman and then, and then, and then, okay. But are you gossiping? Are you a good model of goodness? Can younger women look up to you? Do you know what that is? Do you know what a Proverbs 31 woman truly looks like? Do you know what that is? Do you know what it looks like? Because in Titus is telling me that I need to not be gossiping okay i need to not be drunk i need to be of goodness a model model a role model model the things that you want other people to do behind you if i model society i become society so the next young girl that looks up to me will also fall into the societal norms but if I walk in the righteousness, then the, the young lady that is looking up to me will do the same. And society will not define her story. Because as a model, I have taught her how to build her story. I have taught her how to alter her story from what she has seen in the past. That is what it is when we talk about the history of women. Where did we come from? Okay. Yes, Eve messed up. All right. Eh. Eve, your fault. You cost us a lot. But do we learn from Eve's mistake? Because she technically would be an older woman, y'all. Hmm. That's good. I like that. So we have all of these biblical women, but are we learning from some of the things that they're saying? Are we being foolish? Are we speaking out of turn? What are we doing? So we have this whole line of women's history. And then in present day, what history are we showing? Are we showing that we've learned? Or are we making the same mistakes? Are we still running on this hamster wheel? What are we doing, y'all? I mean, what are we doing? Are we too busy filling up our heads with foolishness and forgetting that people are watching us, forgetting that there's a such thing as a role model? Do we do we not do we not understand that? That we should be virtuous women? That we should remain pure? What happened to 
talking to the young woman and saying, baby, don't be pressured. It's your choice. You can say no. No means no. You can remove yourself from certain situations. You can reach out for help if you need it. We're not teaching those things. We're not teaching our women how to be virtuous. We're not teaching them how to be pure. Because I guarantee you, if I had somebody to teach me the things that I know now, <sighs> could have saved myself a whole lot of heartache. And I can only speak for me. But you know that there was some crazy stuff. Because some of my homegirls, y'all know, we did some foolishness you know prom season is upon us i don't know if the schools are doing prom i don't know how they're doing it but guess what we still need to teach these young girls like yo it's not about the other stuff go to the prom have fun go home that's it that's what you need to do we need to start having these real talks because if not her story will be like your story and somebody else's story and we all are not doing justice for one another it all translates to let's not look down on each other as women let's build each other up let's share an encouraging word but more importantly share your story because your story can relieve somebody else. Your story can also alter somebody else's. It is time out for us allowing foolishness to run our lives. It is time out for us to continue on with these fixed mindsets of she, I, I'm better than her. She thinks she better than me. I can't do her. She thinks she all that. I can't do females. I don't like hanging around females. Okay, fine. You can stay in that mentality, but I guarantee you it's not going to get you anywhere. And I guarantee you if you have younger girls looking at you, it's not getting them anywhere either. So it's time out for all of the fixed mindset and start thinking outside of that box of your little closed mind. This is not about what somebody else is looking at and what somebody else looks like but it is time for us as women to examine ourselves to examine are we gossiping are we drunk or are we being models of goodness are we individuals that other young girls can look at i'm an older on the other end of the millennials but can the younger millennials that are younger than me can they look up to me can the gen zers look up to me as a role model as a mentor or am i just taking them down a path that they don't need to be on we don't want the negative behavior or of, of society to ruin the story of us as women. So for Women History Month, let's share our story with someone else. When someone else shares their story, let's share her story as well. We are not in this alone. It is not just one race against the other. This is women that need to be binded together. Women that need to share and uplift and motivate and inspire and encourage. That is what this is for. Don't just look at the month of March as this is the end of the history for women. Because guess what? It goes on April 1st. It's still women who have a history. And it is not about women who are entrepreneurs or women who are single moms or stay at home moms or working moms. It's all about us 
period, as women. So I say to you and I challenge you for this month, the remainder of this month, share your story with women so that they too may share their story and it becomes her story. So this is where I say to you, keep God first and the rest will be added.